Hey everyone, welcome to the last lecture before we get to the capstone projects. In this one, we'll be talking about NumPy broadcasting. Let's get started. Here in our text editor, I already have NumPy imported and three arrays created. The first one is a three by four. So we have three rows and four columns where it's one, two, and three. The second one is a one dimensional array of length four. And the last one just has one value in three different rows. The idea behind broadcasting is to allow us to use arrays of different shapes to do numerical operations. We'll drop down and say print array A plus array B. The last lecture when we did this operation, we had two arrays of the same size. Now we have one that is much smaller than the other one. What do you think happens when we try to add this array to this one? We'll go ahead and open up a command prompt or a terminal and we'll say python3 broadcasting lesson.py. When we execute, we see that we get a new array that has these values added to each of these rows. So how does this work? NumPy allows us to use this smaller array to do this operation by broadcasting out this array to the same shape as this array. So that just means that if we were to create another array, so let's say array D, and we'll make it these values here, except instead of having one row, we'll go ahead and make three rows the same way as our array A. So we'll say zero, through three, and then we'll do the same thing again, zero through three. And now if we were to add array A plus array D, we should get the same result that we have here. When we execute, we see that we do. So broadcasting means that we don't have to worry about these being the same shape if we want to do this operation on the entire array. So broadcasting saves us time by not having to type this out. Instead, we can use a compatible shaped array. There's a few different ways that we can make compatible arrays, but for this course, we'll focus on two. The smaller array to be compatible needs to have one dimension of one, and then the other dimension needs to match that of the larger array. So in this example, this array has a dimension of one when it comes to the rows because it has one row, and the columns match the number of columns on this array. We could flip this in how we have the array C example. So in array C, we have three rows and only one column. That means this array is also compatible with this array. So the operation of array A plus array C should be a valid operation and we should add one to everything in the first row. We should add two to everything in the second and then three to everything in the third. We'll print this now and that's the result that we get. Broadcasting of course can get more complicated than this. However, if you just take away from this lecture that if you create an array that has a dimension of one and then the other dimension matches that of a larger dimension, you can do that operation along that entire axis in the larger array. I know that's pretty wordy and if you want to see more projects using broadcasting, we'll do that in the optional project video coming up. If you feel comfortable with this concept already, then feel free to skip that. I'll see you in the next lecture.